control. Right. Humming isn't just for grandpa anymore. Control. Left. Singing's second cousin is fast becoming a tool for disabled people, thanks to a George Mason University professor and her grad students. Right. They are creating a voice-activated wheelchair. Speed. Two. That can be used by people who aren't able to use their hands. Speed. Three. The idea was spawned when someone from Fairfax County Public Schools contacted the university about a young boy who was a quadriplegic. Stop. He really enjoyed to be independent. So, you know, uh, at any time, a nurse should have, you know, would have to, you know, uh, accompany him to, you know, uh, do all the usual daily tasks. And he was a very playful uh, child, and you know he decided he wanted to do he wanted to be able to you know do his uh, own stuff uh, on his own. The project took life as Hossein's master's thesis under advisory from Dr. Natalia Pichotto. Dr. Pichotto is an assistant professor of bioengineering at George Mason and was the first of her kind at the school. She got into the field looking to bridge the gap between electrical engineering and biology. So I think the first time I was interested in this was uh, when I, I designed a very basic system to, to detect heart rate. So when, when I could see on my computer screen my heart, and I went running, came back, and saw my heart a little bit fast, just said, wow, this is really cool. And then a circle again from inverse kinematics. She has put her engineering expertise to use by developing assistive technologies for various disorders and disabilities. Oh, maybe it should be on control. With her help, George Mason plans to start offering a major in bioengineering in fall 2010. Both she and Hossein welcomed the opportunity to design the wheelchair for a particular boy. It was only with her help that I was able, able to get in touch with all those real people with the real issues to be able to help them out to get this solved. Control. The project took on many stages. Give you more options. You can say forward, reverse, right, left. The first step was to design software that could control the chair. And it will go forward. From that time, we started to actually making him toys. So we set up a remote control toy that he would be able to control with the car with his voice. He doesn't have any control over his hand, so the remote, regular remote control for the RC cars wouldn't work for him. So we had a speech recognition software for him, and then, you know, that worked out fine. He, he really enjoyed playing with that, so we had them, uh, you know, we had him test it out a couple of times, and then we said, okay, you know, we know it works. He can control the, you know, chair with his voice, so there shouldn't be any, you know, problem for him to be able to, you know, control the actual chair. After that, the project got a big push forward in the form of a $25,000 wheelchair that was donated by locally owned East Coast Rehab. The humming idea came to be after they realized that simple commands like stop and go wouldn't cut it for maneuvering tight corners and doorways. You don't use this for long runs because you're not going to be, a, you don't want to, you know, you're going to run out of breath if you want to do always humming. So you do the usual control of the chair once you're in an open corridor, but if you want to go through a door or you have a tight spot that you need to go through and you need a fine adjustment of the speed, you will use this smooth control option. The humming is just the perfect control variable. So any five-year-old kid, so you can do this test on your own, ask a three-year-old, get a toy car and go slow and they're going to say mm, and then go really fast and they ah, so they will adapt so they know how to control the speed of any technology really so this is very generic reverse you have a map basically right a map of frequencies to speed that's built in <laughs> that we don't need to teach anybody So this is the display that gives you the feedback. Clearly the team still has some work left to do before the chair is ready for action. But their progress is nothing short of remarkable. Does the speech recognition. In the meantime, they've demonstrated two things. Get it? There are people out there who need the help of George Mason engineers. And there are George Mason engineers who are willing to help.